Happy May. No, happy May ending. Happy the end of May. Happy June. Hello, my shiny base. Hello, my besties. It is officially monthly wrap up time. Hello, howdy. I am here to discuss every single book I read in the month of May. No spoilers in this video. I'm just going to be telling you a little bit of what the book is about, what I rated it, and what I felt about it. I ended up reading 13 books this month, which is very shocking to me because I felt like I was in a slump basically all month until the very end. But I read some of my favorite books this month. So it was a surprising May, if I do say so myself. Let's talk about it. So the first book I read this month is actually the only one that I don't have the physical copy to. I read it on my Kindle and that's Charlie Love and Clichés by Ella Maisie. This book is on its way to me, but hasn't arrived yet. So therefore I cannot hold it within my hands, which is very upsetting because look at the cover. Look at the cover. I need it. Let me just hold a Kindle as a symbol of the book. I read it here. This book follows Charlie and William, and if I'm not mistaken, it's dual POV, I'm pretty sure. Basically, they met six years ago in a diner. They walked into a diner, and they met. It was a very cute, meet cute. It was a meet cute. I didn't need to say cute before meet cute. That defeats the whole purpose. It was a meet cute, okay? And they got to know each other six years ago. They would just show up at the diner and always talk, but they never exchanged information or anything. And then one day, they just stopped and never saw each other again. And now it is six years later, and Charlie is there just working her job minding her business and in walks William and guess what he's about to start working with her and she's like does he remember me oh my goodness and it's all a big shenanigans yeah I'm gonna go with that anyway it's the classic Ella Maisie slow burn if you've read other Ella Maisie books if you read Marriage for One or Jason Thorne or Adam Connor you know that Ella Maisie does slow burns and this is no different okay it is a slow burn it is a rom-com it's very funny it's very cute it's very cliche it's right there in the title like every single thing about this book is fluffy and like insanely just cute. I, I really can't put it any other way. If you are not into that, I do not think you will like this book. I started this book right before I got violently sick. I got the flu or some shit and I had to pause in the middle of it because I was sick and I just wanted to sleep and watch Big Bang Theory. Don't ask me why. That was my comfort. And my rating kind of goes with that because I was obsessed with this book the first night I read it. I read I think the first 40% all at once and then I had to pause for literally a week and when I got back I just couldn't bring myself to get as excited about it as I was before. And that's not Ella Maisie's fault or the story's fault. It's just mine because I got sick. Well, it's actually not even my fault because I got sick. Shit happened and I rated this book four stars. I think I would have rated it higher had I not gotten sick and had I binged it all, I think I would have rated it higher. But because I had to pause, it took me out of the story and then it was hard for me to come back in. But I really did enjoy it. It was very funny. It was so cute. It had so much fluff, like I said. It does have some cringe moments, okay? Like there are moments where you're gonna be like Charlie girl what the fuck that happened a lot but it didn't, you know, make me upset in any way. Marriage for One is still my favorite Ella Maisie book. It's still Marriage for One and then To Hate Adam Connor and then this one and then Jason Thorne and then The Hardest Fall. So this one is is there. It's just not as high for me as Marriage for One was or as Adam Connor. Those are still my favorites. But like I said. I think my break kind of has to do a little bit with that. So four stars. If you don't like fluff, if you don't like slow burn, I don't think you'll like this. <laughs> but if you like all of those things, I think this is for you. Then the next three books are all by the same author. I just realized that one of them, I actually don't own the paperback either. So my mistake, I said in the beginning of this video that the Ella Maisie one was the only one. I lied. We all know that I'm a liar. One by one by Frida McFadden. <laughs> are you shocked? And then The Locked Door by Frida McFadden and Ward D by Frida McFadden. Yes, I continued my Frida McFadden binge. I have been obsessed with her books ever since I read The Housemaid, I think was my first one. And so I've just been going through her backlist. And these are the three I read this month. I'm gonna start with The Locked Door. This one is about a door that is very locked. <laughs> one would say that you can't even open it because it's so locked. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. I'm not ahead, I'm gonna just quit. So basically this book follows Nora and when she's 11 years old, her father's arrested for committing a bunch of crimes. He killed women. Some would say that that's a serial killer. I could have just said that. Her father's a serial killer and he was arrested and he would kill women in the basement of her house, the door that was always locked. And now it is decades later and she is a surgeon, she is living her best life, and all of a sudden, crimes against women in the same way that her dad would do it start happening again. And she's like, what the fuck? And it happens to be with people that she knows, her patients. So, 
lot to unpack here. Rated this three stars. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. And I don't know what it was because I actually was very intrigued. Read it in one sitting. Every single one of Freedom McFadden's books I've been reading in one sitting. So that's not my complaint. My complaint is the ending. I didn't like it. I think I saw it coming and that's why I was kind of eh about it. The story was fun. I think that it could have really, really impressed me if the ending was better. I just was not a fan. But I know a lot of people that read this book and were very shocked by the ending. So I guess it depends on what kind of person you are and whether you're a fool or not. <laughs> oh my God, I am definitely kidding. I think that a lot of people could like this book. People was not me though. But I rated it three stars. It's not like I hated it. I just didn't love it as much as Freedom McFadden's other books. Next up was One by One. This is basically a friend group of like, couples. So you have three different couples, I'm pretty sure, and they all are going on a trip. And when they're almost there, their car stops, they get lost, and they have to go in the woods to get to the hotel. And then one by one, they start dropping, dropping like flies, disappearing, Bye bye This one was very fun. The most unrealistic out of all of her books, I'm pretty sure. But obviously I'm not reading these books because they're realistic. Like I'm reading it to be shocked. I'm reading it to be like, oh, how fun and to have that thrill, you know? So this one, I think if you go into it knowing that it is most definitely the least realistic one, you may enjoy it, but don't go into it with your critical eyeballs because if you go into it like that, you're not gonna like it at all. I rated it at three stars as well. I had fun, I really did. The story was, really cool and I didn't know where I was going next, which I like, but I just wasn't obsessed. That's basically it. Like it didn't impress me as much as I wanted it to, but I liked the story and it was fun. Just like the locked door, the same kind of vibe. Three stars, didn't love it, didn't hate it. And last but certainly not least, we have War D, which is Freedom McFadden's newest book. Look at the cover, I love it, it is so cute. So War D follows Amy and basically she's a med student and she's going through her rotations and now is the time that she has to go through the psychiatric ward rotation. So she has to spend the night at Ward D. Amy does not wanna do that, she does not wanna do that at all for reasons that you find out within the book, but she goes anyway because she's a med student and she must. And then when she gets there, hours start to tick by and she starts to notice that she cannot get out and that is her biggest nightmare. You get to spend the entire night with Amy through the psychiatric ward, which I thought was so cool. I love the plot of this book. I love the plot. The ending kind of shocked me, but kind of didn't. Some moments of the ending shocked me, and then some moments I was like, yeah, yeah, obviously. You know, um, something I really hated about this book though was the way they talked about mental health. If you have an entire book set in a psychiatric ward. I would expect it to be done a little better than it was. It was done in a very insensitive way, I think. I didn't love the language that Freedom McFadden used. I didn't love what she was saying. I don't know, I wasn't a fan. It kind of turned me off of the book. So I rated it 3.75 and that's a big part of the reason. And then another reason it's just, I wasn't a fan of Amy, the main character. She just kind of annoyed me. I, I didn't cheer for her because I was like, I, I don't care. But the plot was really great and the story is really fun and definitely keeps you on your toes because you spend the entire night there, which I thought was done very well. So 3.75, I liked it better than The Locked Door in One by One, but not as much as like the other books I've read by Freedom McFadden. I think that I've read my favorites already. I think that I never lie, The Inmate, The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secrets are just my favorites. I don't know if anything will top those. I'm sad because this was a new one and I thought that I was gonna become obsessed with it. Alas, here we are. Obsessed I am not. Then I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This is my first Alice Feeney book, but it will not be my last, mark my words. I'm gonna read the back of this book because I do not wanna spoil anything for you. And it's dangerous to talk about this without being able to say anything. Trust me, okay? It literally says, think you know the person you married? Think again. Things have been wrong for Mr. and Mrs. Wright for a very long time. Every anniversary, the couple exchanges traditional gifts and Adam's wife writes him a letter she never lets him read until now. Self-confessed workaholic, Adam Wright has face blindness. He can't even recognize his own wife. And Amelia is sick of feeling unseen. When Adam and Amelia win a weekend away in Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. This weekend may make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Tell me that doesn't sound intriguing as fuck. This book was such a good mystery, such a good thriller. I kid you not, for 95% of this book, I had no idea what was going on. I thought I was a fool. I literally was like, I, I, I'm not getting this. Like, it's me. I'm the problem, it's me. How D? Because I was just not understanding what was happening in this book. I read and I read and I read and I didn't get it. And then when I got to the very end and they explained everything and it clicked, 
Let me just say I am not a fool, okay? The book is supposed to be that way. So if you start reading this book and you have no idea what's going on, just keep going because you'll get it by the end. <laughs> the twist in this book was so fun so shocking. I think that while I was reading it, I was so focused on how good the story was and how good the writing was that I forgot to try to guess the twist, which is why I was so shocked by the time I got to it. I rated it 4.25. I only didn't rate it higher than that because I was confused the entire time. And that kind of just pissed me off. Like I just wanted to know what was going on and that angered me. If I hadn't known a little more throughout the book, I think I would have rated it higher, but it was still such a good read. And like I said, the ending I did not see coming and I think the story was really, really well done. Now we are going to be talking talking about one of my favorite reads this month. I'm literally gonna throw up just talking about it because I love it so much. It is The Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Now you saw me read The Naturals, the first book, in the vlog of my best friend picking my reads, but you didn't see me read the rest. And let me just say I binged the entire thing. As soon as I read this, I went and bought the rest. And I was like, I'm gonna read this right now. And I did, I did, no lies told. If you like Criminal Minds, please read this. This is literally a YA Criminal Minds. It is a young adult Criminal Minds. Let that sink in. So you have The Naturals, that is book one. Then you have Killer Instinct, book two. That fell. All In, book three. And Bad Blood, book four. In the back of Bad Blood, there was also a little novella called 12, and I read that too, and that was great. These books follow five characters, but it is only told from one POV, only from Cassie's POV. But you have Cassie, you have Michael, you have Sloane, you have Dean, and you have Leah and they are the naturals. Cassie gets recruited to be a part of an FBI program where they let teenagers with special amazing abilities solve cold cases that the FBI has not been able to solve. But then serial killers start striking, shit starts happening, and they get a little more involved than the FBI intended. So each of them has an amazing ability. Picture them as Spencer Reads. That's basically them, okay? <laughs> Cassie and Dean are both profilers. Yes, yes, my Criminal Minds fans, they are. Leah can always tell when someone's lying and she's also really good at lying. Sloane is really great with numbers and statistics. And then Michael reads people's emotions on their faces and he can always tell what someone is feeling. And all together, they work for the FBI and they are moved into Quantico, Virginia, into this house to solve the cases. So there's so much found family in this series, y'all. The found family is amazing. The cases are amazing. Each book does have a different case, but they all connect. You cannot read the series out of order. It will not make sense. The big case that they're solving throughout this entire thing is phenomenal. Bad Blood literally gave me chills. I could not recommend this series enough. I really, really couldn't. If you like Young Adult, I'm telling you, you're gonna love this. If you like mystery with romance subplot and found family and a little bit of humor and just Everything you could want in a young adult book and more, you'll love this series, you will. Like if you're a fan of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy, one of my favorites, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes as well, I think these books will be for you. Please go pick them up, please I beg, I beg. Now my ratings for these, let me tell you. The first book, The Naturals, I rated 4.5 stars. The second book, Killer Instinct, I rated it 4.25 stars. All In, the third book, I rated 4.5 stars. And then Bad Blood, the last book, I rated 4.75 stars. So as you can see by my ratings, I absolutely adore this series. I think I would have rated them like maybe all five stars if I would have gotten other POVs. I think just having Cassie's was fun, but I would have liked to have all of The Naturals POVs. I think that's my only complaint on honestly, but it was amazing. It was so, so good. I felt like I was a part of the team, honestly. I felt like I was trying to catch the unsub. I wasn't. Go read it, please. If you get anything out of this video, it's to read these. And also another book that I'm gonna talk about soon. So just hang on. Every single one of the next books I'm going to talk about are in other videos that I have posted this month. So if you wanna know anything more about them, you can go watch these videos. I'll tell you which ones they're at. First up, unravel me and unite me. <laughs> That's obviously in my last Shadow Me video. So if you wanna go watch me read these, go over there, non-spoiler reading vlog. With these, you have two novellas inside Unite Me. So first you read Destroy Me, and then you stop, and you read Unravel Me, and then you read Fracture Me. And this is the continuation of the Shatter Me series. I read Shatter Me like two months ago, and I just wasn't in the mood to go back. And now I finally went back. And let me just say, I regret nothing. Oh my God, I am falling in love with these books. I adored the Destroy Me novella. Hated the Fracture Me novella though. Let me just say that. Like, destroy me novella, woohoo! Fracture me novella, kill me. <laughs> That's dramatic, but I didn't like it. But each novella is literally 100 pages, so it's not like you're wasting much time. I think you should read the novellas in order with the books. Like, read it in the order that it's recommended by the author, because I think that's the best way to do it. Unravel Me basically follows. Shatter Me. I don't want to tell you anything, because it'll literally spoil the rest of the series. 
Like I can't really talk about these. <laughs> I really adored it. I fell even more in love with Juliet. I 1000% fell for Aaron Warner. I'm there. I'm obsessed. I'm there. I don't know if he's gonna be like my favorite book boyfriend ever, but he might. I'm gonna be reading Ignite Me next. I'll be reading it next month. Well, June. This month, June. Yeah, and I'll be vlogging it, continuing my vlogs. So I did not rate Destroy Me or Fracture Me because I don't rate novellas anymore. Since I'm not a huge novella fan, I felt like it wasn't fair for me to rate them because I kept rating them like two stars, even when I enjoyed the novella. But it's just because I'm not a novella person. So I just leave it as is. I'm like, yes, I read this. No stars, whatever. I just read it, you know? So I didn't rate this, but I did rate Unravel Me. And that was a 4.25. The beginning of this book is very boring. The first half I was like, snooze, I went to sleep, but the second half, oh my God, oh my God. It literally came with the action. Like I could not keep my eyes off these pages. I was like, literally. Unravel Me 4.25, this series is getting really fucking good. I'm very excited for Ignite Me, y'all. I think that might be the first five stars, we'll see. And the other two that are in a video are these right here, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager and Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. I read these in the same video that I read the first book in the Natural series where my best friend, picked the books I read. And these were some of the ones that she picked. So, Home Before Dark, Riley Sager. This is a thriller. This is my second Riley Sager book. I read The House Across the Lake and now I read this one. And this book follows Maggie and like 25 years ago, Maggie and her family moved into this house that everybody always said was haunted and her and her family spent like 11 days there and then they fled and they were like, absolutely fucking not, we're leaving. And now it is years later and her father passes away and she decides to go back to the house and see if any of the things that she's been told are actually true because her father wrote a book. The book is about the house and everything that happened there and how it is in fact haunted and she doesn't remember any of that. So she's like, I'm gonna go see for myself. I'm gonna go make sure this is actually true. And when she gets there, shit starts going down. I really enjoyed the entire book besides the ending. The ending kind of fell flat for me. So I rated this a 3.5. The book in itself was so good. I liked Riley, Riley Sager's writing a lot. It's the same as The House Across the Lake where his writing is very detailed and I feel like I get to know the characters really well. But then the ending just didn't, just didn't click for me. It just did not. I don't know what it was about it, but I didn't like it. But I liked the rest of the book. So 3.5, it wasn't one of those that I absolutely hate. I would definitely recommend it if you're a Riley Sager fan, but it wasn't one of those that I loved either. I definitely loved The House Across the Lake way more, but this was still good. It just wasn't like, oh my God, my mind is blown. I expected it to be, but it wasn't. But I'm still gonna continue reading Riley Sager's other books because like I said, love the writing. And every single time I get so invested in the book, it feels like a movie is going on in my mind. And that's all his writing. It just feels like it's happening in my brain, which I love. So 3.5, liked it, didn't love it. Now Mimi at the Lake, Carly Fortune was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Please look at this cover. It is so fucking cute. I was so excited because I love Every Summer After, which is Carly Fortune's first book. So as soon as this came out, I was like, yes, yes, I need to read this immediately. And it's a perfect summer read because it's set in a lake house and look at the cover. So a lot like Every Summer After, this kind of has the same outline where you go from 10 years ago to now and it is all told from Fern's POV. Yes, her name is Fern. <laughs> You have Fern and Will, and 10 years ago, they spend one day together. One magical day that they are both like, wow, this person is the one, but it is not the right time. And they agree that a year later, they will meet at this spot and they will see how the other person's doing and kind of catch up and see if they still have that spark. But then she shows up and he does not. And now it is nine years later and he in fact shows up. Nine years late, but he shows up. I did not like this book. If there's one book I don't like, it's this one. If everyone in the world loves this book, I am dead because oh my God. I rated it two stars and that was me being kind. I sort of wanted to rate it one star because I put myself through the entire thing and I finished it. I was like, fuck it, two stars. First of all, these people meet 10 years ago. They spend one day together. And they're like, yes, that person's the one. 10 years later, they still remember. I'm sorry, I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast. You're telling me you remember this person you met 10 years ago? I don't believe it. I don't buy it. You're lying. Whatever you're selling, I am not buying. And let me just say that their day wasn't even that magical. Like their day was so mediocre. It was just a day. It was just a regular day. It was like a day that I would just have by myself. And you're telling me that you can't forget this person? No, no, immediately no. And, and, okay? Tommy Fern was the only one putting up any effort in this book at all, okay? Will, what the fuck? Will, you did nothing. Will, you did negative nothing. Tell me a character that brought absolutely zero to the table. That's Will. That's Will. He brought nothing. I don't even remember anything about him. 
That's how little he brought. Fern carried, Fern hard carried, but she was also a fool. So overall, I did not like this book. The only thing I like about it is the cover and the fact that it's over. <laughs> so Meet Me at the Lake, I would definitely not recommend. <laughs> but some of you may like it. <laughs> not me, but someone else. <laughs> I feel like when I love a book, I love it with my entire soul. When I sort of dislike a book, I am aggressive. Like, what was that? Who was that that just talked about this book? Let's put it away because it, it's turning me into a whole new person that I don't like. <laughs> I just have a lot of emotions, you know? Last book of the video is going to be the one that I would recommend with my soul, with my heart, with my entire being. If you don't read this book, you are not my friend. I, in fact, don't consider us besties anymore. And you are now very close, okay? So I am going to want you to take my word for this. Fourth Wing, Rebecca Yaros. I did make a video on this. If you wanna see my entire reaction, non-spoiler reading vlog, you can go watch that. I gave in to the hype. I got this book as an advanced reader's copy. A lot of people were asking me how I got it because apparently it's sold out. It, it, was, it was sent to me. I don't have like the pretty edges. Like the people have been having the dragon edges. I don't have that. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the one that's sold out. It's on Kindle too. So you guys could just buy it on Kindle and then not have the paperback. I know that's crazy though. That's crazy. Buy it on Kindle, and then if you like it, then later in life, get the paperback when it comes back in stock. But this way you can at least read it. That might be a bad plan. That's like a, such a waste of money. Let me not tell you to do that. Anyway, I read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. <laughs> This book follows Violet Soaringale and it's told from her POV. And basically she's going to Basquiat War College. This college is basically like a regular college except they're training for war and they're dragons. So not like a regular college at all. Picture Hogwarts, but make it dragons instead of wizards. It's kind of like that vibe. They all have classes, they learn a bunch of shit. There's different quadrants that you're a part of. Like you have some healers, some writers, some scribes. So it's kind of like that with like Slytherin, Ravenclaw, you know? Anyway, the writers are at the very top. They are the people that ride dragons, but they are also the most dangerous ones because you could die at any moment. You basically are put through all these tests to see if you are worthy to be a writer. And then a dragon has to choose you. You don't choose a dragon, the dragon chooses you. And these dragons have personality, yo. They have personality, they're funny, they're funny. They're literally amazing. Like you can, you can just feel the dragon's personalities. They all have different ones. How amazing is that? You don't only have characters, but you have dragons. <laughs> Violet goes to this college and she was always meant to be a scribe, but her mom all of a sudden is like, no, you're gonna be a writer. You're gonna be a writer, bitch, I'm sorry. You are not gonna be a scribe. I'm gonna send you here to die and I don't care. And Violet's like, oh, okay, so, so I guess I'm going. And then she goes and is put on a bunch of trials and she soon realizes that a lot of the people in that college don't like her because of her family. And one of those people is Zayden and Zayden and her form a little animosity. You see where I'm going with this, enemies to lovers. Wow, you meet so many characters in this book. There's such amazing found family you love the dragons, you love Zayden. He's one of my favorite book boyfriends of all time and he only has one book so far. Make it make sense. In the ending, the last line shook me to my core. I've never been so shocked in my entire life. I would die to get the next book. I fear I'm gonna have to literally be like, Rebecca, slide it over. I don't care what you have to do. I don't have the emotional capacity to wait until November for the next book. I think there are going to be five books in the series and the next one, Iron Flame, only comes out in November and then we don't even know about the rest. How am I supposed to go on? But it was worth it. It was worth it. I regret nothing. Like I wouldn't wait to read this. I would honestly just read it and then wait with the rest of us for the next books. <laughs> It's so fun being a part of this community and like seeing the fan art and seeing everybody so excited for this book. <laughs> the hype is so warranted, so warranted. I don't believe in overhyped. So I feel like when something is hyped up, I've said this before, but it just means that a lot of people like it, right? It's popular. And if you don't like it, that's amazing. And that's great, do your thing. But that doesn't mean that everybody else lied about it and that everybody else's feelings towards it are invalid. You know, it's hyped for a reason. And this, it's hyped for a fucking reason. Fourth wing my first five stars in two months. Are you clapping? I literally haven't given a five star to a book since Redeeming and Saving Six. Fourth wing, baby. Fantasy, romance, a little bit of world building, but not too much. I think if you haven't read fantasy before, this is the perfect book to start with because it wasn't very hard. I haven't read fantasy in so long. And honestly, I just got hooked right away. And it is long, 
but it doesn't feel like it's long. I highlighted the entire thing, honestly. Fourth Wing, I could not recommend this enough. Five stars. So these are all of the books that I read this month, my shoddy bays. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you read. Let me know out of these which one your favorite is or which one you're going to read. I love you so much. I will see you on my TBR video. Which books am I gonna read in June? We'll see. <laughs> Should I leave since I, I came in? I came in running, right? I should leave. I should leave. Oh, I gotta give you a kiss. Now I leave.